Welcome to Corrections Mama 27 channel. I want to talk today about um, some whistleblowers, some very brave people in Arizona Department of Corrections that stood up for what is right, paid a high price for it, stood up for what is right, and was actually uh, dragged through the mud for it and even lost their life. Um, there is some good news though. So there's three whistleblowers and I'm going to go through them one at a time. First, there was Mark Haas. Mark Haas, um, he was speaking out about the unlocked doors. The doors that were, did not lock properly the, work, the locks did not work. This happened at Lewis, at Maury, Maury Buckley, and Rast. And um, those are higher custody level two-man cells. And there's, believe, 25 cells per pod. And um, I actually worked at these units um, cross-leveled during this time. And I had problems with it. Um, Basically, the doors show secure on the computer, but they're not. And inmates at will at any time can just slide open their door. They can manipulate the locks easily. I think they just hit right underneath it and pop it and hit and open the door. Sometimes the computers would show a UA alarm and UA, and sometimes not. So these inmates were just letting themselves in and out. They let themselves out while I was in the control room and uh, I called an ICS um, incident command system and made sure that I documented it in my journal. I wrote an information report about it and I notified the supervisor and documented that in my journal. These inmates just opened their doors and were coming out and passing stuff. Another inmate opened their door and received what they wanted and they would come out and just do whatever they wanted. That wasn't happening on my watch, so I called the supervisor and demanded that staff show up and put these inmates back in their cells. Um, they ended up having to put an officer in the pod to sit there and just monitor, which they should have had somebody in there anyway if the doors don't work. Um, because as soon as you put them away and the officers leave, the inmates just start coming out of their cell again. Like, you know, they're not there for following the rules, right? Can't really trust that they're going to stay in there, and we shouldn't. That's why prisons have locks on doors. Uh, so, um, Lieutenant Mark Haas... He was retaliated against for speaking out. Um, there was a hearing, I believe, finally. This has been going on for years, okay? Um, that was when Director Ryan was in charge of things, and he was just trying to cover things up and let things go. Um, but some of the staff were speaking out publicly about it. They released videos about it. They did interviews on the news about it. Technically, we're not supposed to do interviews with the media. So um, we sign a document when we get hired that we're not supposed to talk to the media. But uh, these brave people wanted to get the attention it needed because the department was doing nothing, nothing about these locks. There's lives at stake here. There's inmates' lives at stake and officers' lives at stake. Several inmates got beat up. Several officers got beat up from going in there and just trying to do their job. Inmates would pop themselves out and they would start a you know, fist fight with the officers. And um, then they would, other inmates would open their doors and join in. Crazy, like. That's not supposed to happen at a prison. The whole point of having a prison is that inmates are locked behind doors, right? I mean, who wants to work at a prison where there are no 
secure doors, right? That's dangerous. So anyway, um, Lieutenant Marcos and the union and others did um, some interviews, news interviews, and called out the department for not fixing the problem and for putting staff at risk for safety purposes. And uh, this is very serious. One inmate was killed by other inmates. He was he was doing time for armed robbery with a fake gun. And his name was Andrew, Andrew McCormick. And the inmates went in out of his cell, opened up their doors, opened his door, went in and out, and killed him. He was sent to the hospital, like, and then died two days later um, from a pretty brutal beating. But I'm not sure why they did that. He was not a sex offender. I don't know if he owed a debt or whatever reason that they, a debt, usually they beat each other up for that, but they don't kill you for it. So I don't know exactly uh, why they did that. The department is not coming clean and telling anyone about that. The family um, is not sure either why that happened. He was doing a short sentence. He was doing like a year and a half or two years. No, he was doing 12 years and he was like two, a year and a half in, I guess. Um, anyway, so this is why clearly and obviously securing cell doors, locked doors are important for everybody's safety involved, right? Um, so there was, uh, two trials for Lieutenant Marcas. He had one trial, which was by jury and it was six to two, six said not guilty, two held out and said guilty. And then they were, he was acquitted. So then they did another hearing and did a hearing by a bench hearing so that basically means that a judge will hear it and a judge will decide whether he was guilty or not guilty so a couple days ago he was not guilty uh, the judge said he's not guilty he watched the video I watched the video the video is um, clear and obvious it was not excessive use of force now let me back up just a little bit um, so this guy stood up, right? This whole thing happened because of retaliation. It happens a lot in the Department of Corrections. I have seen it. I have been victim of it and um, others were too. I was able to keep my job though, um, but I've been a victim of retaliation in the DOC many times. So anyway, uh, he, they, they basically said that um, they charged him with aggravated assault. Usually aggravated assault is when a weapon is involved, right? But he didn't have a weapon. This happened in the prison. The inmate was handcuffed. He had them against the wall. And then the inmate um, started resisting. And you can kind of see his knees bend like he's trying to create, you know, get out of it and, and, and go lower. So the officer, um, Mark Haas grabbed him and put him on the ground face down. That's a takedown. That is a legal takedown. There's nothing wrong with what I saw that he did. There was nothing aggravated about it. The inmate was handcuffed, of course, but still, they can still be resistant when they're handcuffed. And they can still do harm to officers when handcuffed. Believe that. So anyway, he put took this inmate down and the department used that situation and um, fired him and said it was excessive use of force. And not only did they fire him, but they doubled down on it and charged him with aggravated assault. So this man has been drugged through court and they made his life hell because some important people that are supposed to run the prison don't want to do their jobs and make it safe for staff. Look, 
When you're an administrator and you sit up in your cozy office while officers are on the ground, boots on the ground, doing all the grunt work, doing all the dangerous work, while you sit in your cozy air-conditioned office and you decide that you don't want to do your job, that you don't want to deal with any hassles like doors locking, that is ducked up. That is a hot mess. And trust me, there's plenty of lazy administrators that just want to sit back and get paid and not take on their responsibilities. It is their responsibility that their officers are safe and that inmates are disciplined and that when infractions are made that these inmates are disciplined and when staff screw up that they're disciplined. This wasn't a fair disciplinary situation. There were lots of other takedowns that were a lot more aggressive that could be deemed excessive use of force. And these people weren't even reprimanded for it. They didn't get any kind of disciplinary. And there were some that were far worse than what Lieutenant Haas has done in that video. And they were disciplined, but not fired. So, I mean, come on. I know officers that actually took their badges off and tried to go at it with an inmate and they were disciplined but not fired. So this is just outrageous and this kind of shows how oftentimes administrators abuse their power and they don't want to do their job. They don't want to fix this. Okay, money was given to the department for fixing these locks. But amazingly, no one knows what happened to the money. It just vanished. It's gone. It's, where is it? What happened to the money that the government gave the Department of Arizona at Lewis to fix these locks? Never mind the fact that the department didn't even ask for money in the beginning. It wasn't until much later when it got news media attention that they decided well, I guess we should petition and ask for money so we can get these locks fixed. Then they sent in a bunch of unqualified uh, people that weren't even, you know, certified locksmiths. And um, they were called door crews. They would go in and out and open and close doors and open and close doors. And they really didn't even fix anything or do anything. And there was proof of that. There was video proof of that. Doesn't really surprise me at all. So they just like say, oh, we're going to, um, we're going to set up a team, a task team, and they're going to take care of this. Okay. It's not just about that. All right. You need parts. They needed to order parts. These doors had not been maintained ever for many, many, many years. So that's what happens over time. Things get worn out, especially opening and closing, opening and closing doors. They get worn out. They need parts. They need maintenance. They need oiling. I did a video of an officer that said that the doors needed to be oiled and he used his salad dressing to oil the doors so he could just get them open. Right? So, um, yeah, there's a video I did on that true story. So, the fact that this guy had his life nearly destroyed, dragged through court, accused of a crime when the crime was really committed by the Department of Corrections. Um, it took a judge three minutes to see that video and say not guilty. Okay, so I'm sure there's some other things that this uh, officer, this lieutenant has, there are other avenues I'm sure he's going to take. One, he can go to the state board and fight for his job back. Um, and he will get back pay for all the years that he was fired. And then he could get some kind of um, relief for attorneys and stuff like that. There's things that can be done. Whether he wants his job back or not, probably not. Because, you know, the department has gotten increasingly worse since he's left. So he might not want his job back. I don't know if he can go to the board and fight it to prove that he was innocent and get back pay. I would do it and then quit. 
I would do it and show up to work for two, three days and then quit or something, you know? Get all my money and my time back, right? So, because they would have to also give him all his vacation time, annual time, and all of this stuff, right? They can't tell him, okay, so you can have your job back, but you have to work for two years or three years. They're not going to say that. They can't do that. But they can give his job back, give him all his vacation time, all of his holiday time he would have accrued, plus... All of his back pay back for the years that he spent in court trying to defend himself. And then I would show up to work and quit. I mean, I mean, you know, F-U-D-O-C. That was terrible what they did to him. Um, trust me, going through all that stuff, I've been through court and stuff a lot. Not really through D-O-C, but it's a nightmare. It's very difficult to do. And it puts a lot of stress on people's family and stuff. So uh, the department ultimately did not like it that he blew the whistle um, on the, their poor and ridiculous COVID response. Um, did you know that when the federal government gave Lewis Department of Corrections of Arizona, when they, they gave all of the prisons federal money for COVID, all government institutions got money, federal money for COVID. So what they did was at Lewis was, is they gave all of the administrators major and above. They gave them a big fat raise and a bonus. Listen, they're sitting in their offices. They're not being exposed to COVID. But they're getting a raise for pushing papers and pushing pencils. That money should have gone to line staff. Sure, maybe they could take a little small bit of it for themselves. But no, they took it all. They took all the money and gave it to the administrators. COs didn't get squat. The only thing you got if you were in a uh, run that was an isolation area, They, we got like 10% more money an hour or something like that. But administrators, they took all the money and got it in their own paycheck. Even the, some of the administrators, like the deputy wardens and wardens, they were, or the deputy wardens, some of them were like, they didn't feel right about it. I know one of them that worked at my unit, he didn't feel right about it, and he showed us his paycheck and showed us how much money he got, which is a lot. He felt that it should have gone to the staff. He ended up dying. I don't know if he was trying to fight it or not, but he did reveal it to everybody. He, who knows what they did to that guy, right? So anyway, that's the kind of dirty dog crap that they do to staff and the cover-ups. And it's just very dirty, you know. And the longer they keep all these people and don't just clean them out and bring in fresh people, um, the more corruption there is. And the people that stand up for what is right get drugged through the mud or killed, you know. So um, that's what happened to uh, Lieutenant Marcos and by the way Lieutenant Marcos thank you for standing up for what is right and congratulations on you know the judge deeming that you're not guilty and the justice that you got did you really get justice I I don't think so because you know you were drugged through the mud you were drugged through court that's extremely stressful on yourself and your family it's ridiculous they shouldn't, you've, you've had to go through two trials, just very, very nasty. DOC is very nasty. So I think that that's wrong. It was total retaliation for them firing him because they didn't like it that he was talking about the dirty secrets the DOC was trying to brush under the rug. But he was trying to protect his line staff. He was trying to protect the officers in the runs that are getting their ass beat down. That's what happened was inmates would open the doors and beat up staff. There were several different officers that got beat up. 
Uh, one of them I knew personally, his name was Zufelt, and a really nice guy, great guy, and he got railroaded, you know, and I didn't like that either. Okay, so let's move on to the second officer. The second officer that was a whistleblower was, um, actually he was an officer, but he was Sean Holland. He was a deputy warden. What? A deputy warden is speaking out now? Yes. The deputy warden eventually started speaking out as well because he was um, unhappy with the results of DOC trying to fix the problem. They didn't fix anything. All right. All they do is make shit worse. They didn't fix the doors. How hard can it be? Br bring in some qualified locksmiths, you know, and do it. So what happened was, is Sean Hullen, associate deputy warden, he was also fired for excessive use of force that he wasn't even involved in. All right. He never laid a hand on the inmate. And he's, um, he's going, they're trying to take him down right along with the, um, officer that I just spoke about, Mark Haas. So they're saying that he was also fired for excessive force for an inmate he never put his hands on. Maybe they're saying that because he's the supervisor that he's got to take the fall for that. BS. That's crap. So, he said um, in a few different in media interviews and things like that, that they, look, look, anytime there's a problem with the air conditioner, the doors, a secure, well, a secure, let's just say a security device to make it simple. A security device could be a key. It could be the computer that opens doors. It could be the doors. It could be anything that would involve security. It could be a security light. Anytime something's out or broken or not working properly, you put it in your journal, you do an information report, you call your supervisor, you get the information report number, and you ask them to do a work order. So this is passed down into the morning meetings. Everybody knows about it. And they do a work order so maintenance can fix it. Well, maintenance was saying it was fixed because, and it wasn't fixed. Probably because the warden and director said, cover it up. Say you fixed it. Then we look good, right? Hopefully no one gets killed. Oh, well, right? Do they care if we get killed? No, they don't give a rat's ass about us, right? We're just gum under their shoe, right? We're just a problem. So, um, he was reporting that the maintenance work orders were ignored because maintenance would go in, open and close a door, pretend like they did something and never fix it. Because then he went in with a camera and manipulated the door easily and was easily to open and close the door. Some doors you didn't have to manipulate. They just wouldn't lock. They would close and you just pull it right open. So he went in with a video camera and said, wait, I gave you 48 work orders and you said you fixed five or six of them, but you said they're all fixed. None of them are fixed. And he would just go in with the, you know, video camera and show, look, this door's on this work order right here. Here's the report where they say it's fixed. And here's me pulling it open when it's supposed to be locked. So, of course, they don't like that. They don't like us to show that they're corrupt, right? Or that they're liars, right? Because they fire people for lying. So they decided, well, you know, we're going to fire you for excessive force. Even though you weren't involved, you knew what happened, whatever. He reported everything. They did a report on the use of force. It wasn't excessive. Even the judge said it wasn't excessive. And six jurors said it was excessive. And I don't know why the other two didn't agree that it wasn't excessive, other than it's kind of hard sometimes maybe for laymen people to know um, what is excessive and what is not. I'm sure they were told what the threshold of that was. 
whatever their bias is, uh, I don't know, but um, Sean Holland is still going through court proceedings. I mean, this has been going on for years, so he's he's close and soon. Hopefully, they will also say he is not guilty. So it's an ongoing court thing. So because he came out and said they're not fixing the doors, they're not doing what they're supposed to do, and this is dangerous for staff, they decided, well, guess what? We're going to drag you through the mud, too. And so he's still going through court proceedings, and um, we'll see what happens with that. Last but not least, this one is the most, actually. Um, I want to talk about Gabriela Contreras. Gabriela Contreras, I knew of her. I was, I would go in and she would post me. Um, she was always very respectful, especially of senior staff. And um, she's the one who broke the dam. She's the one that... Um, leaked the videos of these inmates opening the doors and beating up staff and beating up other inmates and total mayhem. She's the one that took the videos, put it on a, a drive and took it home and they caught her doing that. Um, you're not allowed to bring in drives or save videos and bring them home. Um, you're not allowed to access them or whatever and then eventually only certain supervisors were allowed to access um the camera videos and stuff listen she was trying to protect her staff she didn't want to see on her watch an officer die because the locks aren't working okay i mean let's be for real these are higher custody inmates they're usually violent and dangerous or have violent and dangerous charges it's not right. She didn't feel that. She didn't want that on her shoulders. She wanted to sleep at night. So she, um, when she saw that the administrators were doing nothing about the doors, like Sean Holland also saw, she decided she was going to uh, leak out that video. And she went on the news, ABC News, I believe Channel 12 in Arizona. And she... Um, leaked the videos and said this is what's going on somebody's going to get killed somebody needs to do something about it um so unfortunately they gave her hell too you know she stood up for staff she's doing the right thing then sometime later, she's found dead with a self-inflicted self gunshot. Look, Gabriela Contreras was doing the right thing. DOC was doing the wrong thing, all right? What, less than 1% of suicides by women are committed with a gun. True. Look it up. Why is that? Well, because women want to be seen pretty and we're kind of more vain. And women tend to be less violent, especially to themselves. So women aren't trying to put a gun up to their head and blow out their brains and be found that way by family and to be seen that way their last time being seen. Women generally don't kill themselves with a gun shot you know they just don't kill themselves they don't like to have the blood splatter and to be seen that way less than one percent of women kill themselves that way so uh that's just not something that women do and she also had two daughters who loved her and supported her in everything she did she had plans for the future Women just n almost never kill themselves that way. And this wouldn't be the first time a DOC officer that had gone very strongly against DOC had been found dead. All right. Just so 
Anyway, what I'm implying is she didn't kill herself. I don't believe she killed herself. All right. When she leaked that video, and this is why. This is why I don't feel like she killed herself. I feel like she was murdered. I feel like somebody went out and killed her. Because when she leaked that video, she said, listen, everybody from the top down, starting with the director down, all the administrators need to go. You need to clean them all out and bring in new because they're corrupt. They're all corrupt. She was very clear about it. By the way, the director lost his job. And there might have been other people that also lost their job. Will they say he resigned or retired? Will they, you know, the governor probably said, look, man, this is too much heat. You know, Ducey was the governor at the time. Ducey, I used to call him Douchey because he was basically a rhino. All right. I didn't like him because um, he never stood strongly for anything. He just was just trying to make everybody appeased and happy and keep their keep his job. He really didn't do anything extraordinary. He, you know, probably told Director Ryan, who's garbage, by the way, you know, Director Ryan was crooked himself. He privatized all kinds of things in the prison system, including medical, which harmed tons of people, and he got kickbacks and money for it. You know, where did the money go for the locks? Why didn't he figure that out? He never stood for anything. So, Ducey, the governor, should have been on top of this. He should have been in charge of this. He should have gotten to the bottom of it. You know what? But he... He's a yellow belly. He has no backbone. He, he's a jellyfish, man. He can't stand up for shit. He's a jellyfish with no sting. So, anyway, uh, he allowed too many dirty, rotten things go on. And he allowed too many corrupt people stay in their positions. Um, I mean, come on. We had a warden that was a drunk driver she was driving around state vehicle drunk like three four times was arrested she kept her job he just passed her to another unit figured everyone would forget about her and move her back to lewis promoted her in fact by the way so dirt bag right so i don't believe that gabriella Contreras. i don't believe that she actually killed herself I think um, DOZ took their own measures, is, is in my opinion, and that's it. So anyway, this is a video about the officers that were caught up in the door crisis and uh, spoke up through the media and called them out. Things didn't go well for them, but I hope the two surviving officers that lived to tell their story and lived through court and didn't end up in prison for talking bad about the Department of Corrections in Arizona. I hope that those whistleblowers sue them, sue the state, sue the shit out of the state. So I'm guessing, I mean, that would be my next move. So that's it for today. That's what's going on. Um, congratulations, Haas. Moving on to the next thing. I know when you're fighting, 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 you get weary. You get tired. You get tired of fighting all the time. But you're fighting the good fight. Keep fighting. And get them jackasses back. Get them back. Do what you need to do. Sue them personally for what they've done to you. What they did to you was terrible. They basically tried to ruin your reputation. Look, if you get fired from DOC for something like that, it's probably very hard for them to even find a job. You probably can't even get a job packing pretzels or working at Jack in the Crack. So, um, so yeah, do what you need to do. Take care of business and don't let them get away with that. So signing off, please like, share, subscribe. And um, comment 
and let me know what you think. Is the department corruption? You know, we have nicknames for it, Department of Corruption, not corrections. <laughs> it is corrupt. So like, share, subscribe, and thanks for watching.